2011 saw catastrophic flooding on the Missouri River system, with record releases of water from its main stem dams. The Missouri Sedimentation Action Coalition, MSAC, is trying to get the federal government to tackle the many problems caused by the amassing sediment in the main stem reservoirs. Make no mistake about it, sediment to the Missouri River system is like a slow-growing cancer in the human body. Untreated, it invades, it compromises, it makes the body less able to perform, and it especially compromises the body's ability to function in adverse situations. MSAC presents this video in response to the many questions we have received, asking what effect the flood of 2011 had on the creeping cancer that is sediment in our reservoirs. Summer flooding of 2011 reminds us all of what the mighty Missouri River can do. This is a river system where weather can produce floods and drought the same year. Six dams and reservoirs on the upper river tame the extremes. For many, the summer of 2011 was an extreme. However, without the systems of dams and reservoirs, we would have learned an entirely new definition of extreme. Flooding not only forced people from their homes, but also homes from their foundations. Thousands of people filled thousands of sandbags. Miles of levees were built. Roads, even interstates, were closed. Summer life was shut down in places. Intense runoff forcing heavy releases shoved a massive amount of water down the tube of the river, scraping and carrying sediment until the waters hit still lake areas where the sediment then dropped out. The floods of 2011 funneled more sediment-moving power in the Missouri River than has been experienced since the system was built. This power had devastating results. Record water releases pushed and drew sediment to new places. One route sediment did not take was past the dams. Floods did not flush sediment out of the system. Downstream they had their own sediment. Flooding upstream of Gavin's Point Dam pressed the accelerator on sand and silt, taking up the space reserved for water in the reservoirs. The speed and duration of high water releases eroded banks and saturated land producing extreme amounts of sediment. Powerful releases also moved existing sediment further into the reservoirs, making way for deeper channels in some places, but only for a time. We do not know how much more sediment entered the system than an average year. We do know the river power experienced during the summer of 2011 gave sediment more fuel to move. Since its creation, the system has lost more than 5 million acre feet of water storage to sediment. That's over 7% based on a total storage volume of 73.1 million acre feet and 9% of the non-permanent storage. Might not seem like much, but realize that is averaged across the entire system. 
The system is much, much worse in critical areas like Niobrara, Nebraska, and Springfield, South Dakota, which is essentially a badly clogged artery. During the flood of 2011, when engineers were watching rapidly rising waters with increasing dismay and alarm, even 7% more storage may have prevented some downstream destruction. Simply put, sedimentation is affecting the river flows, so flood water spread out further, causing greater damage, especially in the clogged arteries. The system provides water storage for a number of critical purposes, drinking water systems, recreation, and yes, flood control, along with tools to help navigation downstream. Stored water plays a key role in hydropower, too. The dams allow us to control the flow of water through turbines to create much-needed electricity. These benefits add up to more than $1.7 billion every year, but these economic rewards steadily decline as sediment is allowed to collect. Think of it as a maintenance issue, just as your car will eventually fail if you continue to drive it but never change the oil. The reservoir system will fail if the sediment is not managed. Sediment blocks off water intakes and boat docks. Sediment also worsens winter icing conditions, which can force a reduction in electricity generation. Its negative impacts are felt every day somewhere in the system. Just take a look at Springfield, South Dakota. The river landscape has changed dramatically over just a few decades.